from in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. Before we begin today's regularly scheduled intro, I have to correct myself once again. Gideon, that's the dude with the fleece I brain farted near the end of today's conversation. His story can be found in Judges chapter 6. There's a lot there to address, so I'll save that story for another time. With that being said, Kali Ma. She is the Hindu goddess of time, creation, preservation, and destruction. She's an ancient deity that predates the Christian deity by thousands of years. The funny thing is, I have found several testimonies regarding Kali Ma that are almost identical to the testimonies I hear from Christians regarding their Jesus. For example, Coda states, I've had bad energy and bad luck around lately. I've been doing meditations to try and connect with Kali and get her help and guidance. So far, in the few days, I have felt a shift in something. I am not sure what, but I can tell it is positive in a way, and she is helping me. Kalika states, I found Kali Ma in Trinidad when I was visiting the country. Later, my life changed a lot. I have no words to express my gratitude. Big B states, Kali Ma is my spiritual mother. When I first met her, I was fearful after being attacked. I was deeply paranoid, and in my first connection with her, she gave me the best sleep I had in years. I feared nothing. She gave me 100% assurance I was safe. And the people who attacked me were suddenly full of fear of me and are now trying to make peace. I am very thankful for her help. Be completely honest with her. Kali Ma comes to people when they are in the quiet, when they are meditating. If you replace Kali Ma in these testimonies with Jesus, it's the same shit. Plus, if Kali Ma and the belief system she comes from came before the Jewish religion and deity, then would it not stand to reason that all gods from religions who came after her are false gods claiming to be real ones? Why would Yahweh, the egotistical child Christians worship, not step in and say, whoa, what about me? I deserve the glory and the recognition. What we see instead is dude waits thousands of years, then steps in claiming to be the only true God. He's a bit late to the party. The OG gods have made their claim to fame already. He let these other gods get the slip and introduce themselves first, controlling the narrative for so long. It just doesn't add up for an insanely jealous being to stay quiet for thousands of years. What kept him from speaking up? Was he trapped somewhere? Did he want to look like a second-rate, used-up, borrowed character? Because if that was his plan, mission accomplished. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't figure this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. That, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is Christian author and speaker Kim Sorrell. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you, Michael. Nice to be here. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for coming on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your books? Sure. Yeah. So I've written a couple books. Mm -hmm. um, Cry Until You Laugh. It's uh, about my cancer journey and my husband's my husband was was diagnosed with cancer just four months after I was and passed away six weeks later and so that's what cry until you laugh is about hmm. and then my latest book love is is about love it's about a journey that I took I decided I would dedicate a full year to discovering the true meaning of love because hmm. somehow we just don't know it like there are a lot of things about love or we think are love that maybe aren't love or things done hmm. in the name of love that perhaps aren't love. There's no manual oh. for it. There's no love for dummies. So, <laughs> so I decided I would figure out this love thing and gotcha. um, yeah, so that's it. Love well, is. what did you discover? I'm dying to know. Oh my gosh. I discovered what is love, love, love. Uh, love uh, so I took 
this 2000 year old poem that you hear at a lot of weddings, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, right? You've First Corinthians it. 13. You've heard it a bunch of times, right? But even at non-Christian weddings, that mm. is that poem is used. Mm. But so anyway, so I decided I would take one word at a time and figure out what is love that is patient? Yeah. What is love that is kind? And what I discovered is when you put love is or love is not in front of any word, it completely changes the meaning of the word. <laughs> and and if I were to say, what is love like an overall arc of those 14 is's and isn'ts of love. So it took me a little longer than a year to do the book, but um, that it's complete and total freedom. Mm. When you love, you allow other people to be who they are, who, who they believe they're created to be without any judgment, huh. without any, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to try to fix you. None of that. Yeah. You just allow people to be who they are. That's, that's, freedom yeah yeah to not to not have to uh fix people gotcha nice. <laughs> right, right. so we're not I broken judge. yeah right gotcha gotcha so awesome thank you for that i love is fun love is love is kind love is patient all that fun stuff love is a it's a big topic for sure and there's a lot to it um that must have been taking a, a, a quite a thing to write that whole book um man all right so did you use that Bible verse as a reference? Yes, I used it kind of a, as a roadmap. As a roadmap, I, yeah. I used all the words that are, are part of that. Gotcha, gotcha. And that comes from the Bible. And as you know, you're on the Bible says what. So <laughs> <laughs> what is the Bible to you? So the Bible to me is a beautiful book hmm. with poems and stories and um, and wisdom and uh written by men and women hmm. um who experienced things in their life that they believed to be things of god hmm. and and that's what i believe the book is I, I believe it's something that uh anybody could learn things from just hmm. like other holy books, there are things that, that people can certainly learn from. Hmm. And uh, so I, that's what I believe the Bible is. Gotcha. So is, is it inspired by God? Uh, I, that's, that's always the word, right? Yeah. Is, is it inspired? You know, it's funny. I was raised Catholic and I used to think when I was a kid that somehow God's hand came down on the hand of Paul and wrote the words, you know, whatever. It's very Patrick Swayze of him. Very Patrick Swayze. Exactly. exactly. Where's the clay? Where's, Where's just the, clay? the clay? But, uh, but I, I don't believe that anymore. I do believe that, um, um, I do believe in God, obviously, but I mm. believe that the inspiration, the inspired word where that would come into play is that these people mm. who wrote what's in there um, had encounters with with their faith. Mm. And so in that way, God inspired what is written in the book. God. So is it, are the stories in there true? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I think that... Um, uh, a lot are. I don't take the Bible completely literally. Hmm. Uh, I mean, there there are things that certainly have been proven um, to be true. You know, hmm. different things in history, and things that are written in other books as well, not just in the Bible. Different stories, um, maybe told from a different angle or told the same even. Hmm. And so, I think a lot of it is true. Uh, I I don't necessarily believe in a seven thousand year old Earth or whatever it is i believe that that uh god is eternal hmm. so uh like oh my word those pictures that came out from wow um, the, the right? telescope thingy yeah oh my wow. word amazing yes. uh, breathtaking. absolutely amazing breathtaking hmm. and so they're going how many universes away and how many billions trillions of it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, I don't think that was created 7,000 years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just saying, just yeah. saying, but yeah. I don't think that that needs to rock anybody's faith either. Hmm. 
you know, I think when it, when it comes down to what to believe or not believe, you know, if you believe or don't believe in God, it, it doesn't matter if those stories are true or not. Hmm. So with those, with those amazing, beautiful pictures we've, we've all seen recently, where's God in all that? Did he, is he out there controlling it? Is he Patrick Swayze it? You know, I mean, what, what's going on with the, the whole world? How does that work for you? Well, the way it works for me is that, that there is a creator that, that that stuff didn't just happen. You know, I look at those beautiful pictures and go, wow, there are people that think that this just happened. Like, well, where but, is he now? But though? it came like, from what? So he started it, he spoke it into existence. And where is he hiding now? Like, why can't we see him with our telescopes? <laughs> like, is he out there? Well, <laughs> well, I, I believe God is spirit. Spirit. And so, so not a physical being huh. to be seen. Gotcha. I think there have been times that he manifested into a physical being to be seen. Huh. Um, you know, but but I believe that God is spirit. So his main presence is spirit. He he can't be seen. But when he can be seen, so we're created in his image. We're not created as spirits. So he must have an image, right? He's got to be a physical body, right? I mean, how does that work? Sure. You know, created in God's image can mean a couple of different things, though. Hmm. So in his image, as far as his love and compassion, peace, ah. kindness, joy. Gotcha. Gotcha. So in his image, nose, ears, mouth, and chin. So right? People are pretty violent pretty nasty sometimes. So is that in his image as well? Well, you know, it's interesting that you use the word people. Yeah. Because uh, one thing that I found out about love is that when you clump people together, when you start saying, well, those people do this and those people do that and clump them together, uh -huh. you're steering completely away from love. Yeah, but and Nazis, Nazis suck. So I'm going to clump those people into one thing. I, okay, so Nazis, I mean. Nazis had a leader. <laughs> yes, and the Nazis that, that live today are, yeah. I mean, Trash. it's it's hard to believe why people believe the way they do. Yeah. But at the same time, everybody, we're all in the same boat in that every day that we've lived mm. leads us to today. Mm. And so the things we've seen, the things we've been taught, the things that we know to be true, the things we believe in our hearts uh, shape us. The way we, mm -hmm. the way we act, the way mm -hmm. we react, everything mm -hmm. that we've been through makes us who we are today. So yeah, there are people in the world that don't do nice things. Absolutely. So yeah, those aren't created true. in his image or are they just, I don't know, how's that work for you? Well, I think a baby unlike some people with faith i think a baby is born the most beautiful innocent creature well i'm gonna to have to disagree with you there there's a lot of ugly babies out there <laughs> i know some of them look like george washington but <laughs> eventually and as a mother i can tell you uh, my babies were the most oh, of course of course of yeah course. No. yes, yes. <laughs> that works <laughs> but <laughs> but so, then things happen stuff happens yeah, right life yeah. happens and life happens oh man yeah. yeah that's for sure so is that part of god's plan for for beautifulness to turn into nazi like how, how does that work i i sure don't think so hmm. i mean i uh i don't think anybody would think that part of any plan is is to make things go bad huh. um yeah i believe in i god of love and peace and compassion gotcha. and uh so i don't think that's part of the plan but i think he's not a puppet master well and directing our steps i believe that we can do whatever it is we want to do free will so you believe in free will i do i believe kind of going off a little bit here but i, I no, it's love it i love it the rabbit holes everywhere that's my thing <laughs> um so Jeremiah 29 11. You mm -hmm. familiar with that one? Uh, for I know the plans I have for you. Yes, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. So 
when the plans that God has for you don't work out, whose fault is that? Uh, yours. These are yours. God's perfect plans. Is he? Well, well. <clears throat> okay, so God's perfect plan for most people. I'm, I don't want to go down that way. That goes the whole thing. Let's go back to love. Let's go back to love. That goes that goes a whole other direction. I, want, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I want to go back to love. I want to stick with that for sure. Uh, let's let's go to your first Corinthians. Uh, not yours. Sorry. First Corinthians 13, four through five. I love this verse because to me, it shows how different the God of the Bible is compared to the people who wrote it. The people who wrote it think that love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, all those things. But yet when I look at the very God that these people worship, I see a not very patient, not very kind, an envious, boastful, you know, proud child killer. That's what I see when I see the God of the Bible. And, and it's kind of the opposite of everything here. We can go with patient. Um, or, or it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, rejoices in truth. It always protects. It always preserves. We can go right to the very first story in the Bible, Adam and Eve. What happened in that story? Was he, was he uh, patient with them when they sinned one time? Or did he hold a grudge with them for all eternity for all mankind? You know, it's kind of funny. So you're a parent, right? See, yeah. Yes, yes. So I have kids too. And uh, there were many things, many times that I would say to one of my kids, hey, don't ever touch the stove. Whatever oh, you do, the stove. don't ever Always touch the stove, right? yeah. Or the iron, you yeah. know, whatever. I mean, like you just want to put the fear into them because you don't want them to get hurt. Yeah. So, and then if they do, they get burned. Yeah. So, but that's not an internal thing, case. though. That's a, it's a big difference there. It's a big okay. difference. I can forgive my kid for touching the stove. I can. I'm not going to write it in a book. I'm not going to judge him later for it. I'm not going to judge his siblings and their siblings and their and his kids and their kids and their kids and their kids for it. It's a little bit different. I I, I find that Christians love to go to the stove thing. I'm not really sure why. Really? But oh, it, it's it's so know, weird I've to me. I've never heard it before. I thought I was genius. No, <laughs> you're you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> But for some reason, Christians love going to the stove thing. And to me, that's very, that's a temporary thing. You're going to burn your finger or your hand. Let's just say your hand, your whole hand. You're going to burn your whole hand. That's temporary. Your, your hand's going to heal. You're going to, you're going to learn from that situation. But what God is offering you is either you, you obey me. And if you disobey me, I'm going to throw you in hell forever. And you're going to be burning forever. That's not temporary. That's a big difference there between I'm going to touch the stove and learn a lesson or disobey God and burn forever. You know what I mean? Uh, Such as the Adam and Eve thing. Yeah, they got punished. They got kicked out of the garden. I'm not going to kick my kid out of the house for burning his hand on the stove. Right. Even if he grabs the snack he's not supposed to, I'm (laughs) not going to kick him out of the house. Oh, the snack he's not supposed to. So let's put, put the fruit cup down on the breakfast table next to everything else. And he knows he's not supposed to have that fruit cup for breakfast. He knows he's have that fruit cup for the lunch snack thing, right? But he eats the fruit cup. He takes that fruit cup and eats it, regardless of me telling him. What what would be a fair punishment? Grounding him for the day or for eternity? (laughs) I mean- You know, Michael, I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. And and, uh, and like I said, here I thought it was pretty smart with the stove thing. I mean, (laughs) you know, everyone's gonna leave a scar, (laughs) but- um, but uh, I think that there are mysteries and mm. I think it's okay to have mysteries. Like I, I have uh, believed in God my whole life. Mm-hmm. I was raised Catholic and, you know, the fear of God was in my home, um, but in not yeah. bad, not all bad ways. You not know, all bad. I believed, I believed in, in God that none scared me, but, um, but you know, <laughs> God didn't scare me. <laughs> so uh and then you know went to other churches as an adult and now to be honest i'm not going to a church i just think that god is everywhere and hmm. church can be bad i mean yeah. it can be good <laughs> yeah. i don't want to diss everybody but but it can also be harmful for sure and, absolutely i mean people get hurt church and, is not a safe safe uh, safe zone that's i say that all the time it is not yeah. a safe zone there's no, predators I, there as well right 
Well, yeah. sure. I mean, they're in the news. Yeah. Right? Constantly, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But they're, they're people, yeah. you know, and people do things. That yeah. Don't. But like, no, I mean, normal people don't do those kinds of things. It's, it's, it's the extreme. I don't even know what you want to call it. Like, a, like there's just something off upstairs. I don't know how else to say it. They're not playing with a full deck. There you go. They're one being short of a burrito. I don't know. <laughs> However you want to go with it. So That's normal just, people don't do what? You, what is it that? Assault children in churches or 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 do the, the things that these these monsters are doing inside of church buildings that are. Well, there's, but there's people doing them inside of other buildings. Right. But this is God's house. It's a little bit different there. These are God's chosen people. This is the pastor. This person talks to God constantly and, and, and has a relationship with him and his deity shows him the right way and the path. And he's supposed to be there to help people and chosen by God. I don't know how many times I got to say that one, but you know, <laughs> God chose this person to be in a role. That's what they say. And then they're That's molesting what they children. So <laughs> that's what they say. Church but, is not a but, safe place. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, obviously there are some pastors that are wonderful and some priests that are fabulous. I mean, mm. there's, you know, it's, it's sort of, again, throwing everybody into a clump mm. and saying they in all churches. And there are some good churches, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. There are some, I'm sure there are. I'm sure but, there are. I'm sure is, somewhere. There are. Oh, my but, buddy, but, Bobby. Yeah, he's yeah, got a good church. But, Yes. And I know people talk about a calling or people talk about um, being chosen. Hmm. I just think that, that God's on everybody's side. God is for everybody. It, and so it's gotcha. not a matter of me standing there judging and going, you're in, you're in, you're out, you're out. But, but God is for, for all of us. Yeah. So that, that you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out thing. Um, do you think that applies to heaven? You know, I'll tell you, this is a, a ongoing conversation that before my husband died it's been 13 years but um that we would talk about because i have a hard time believing in a god of love and kindness and compassion and peace that would send people into a place called hell yeah fire and brimstone i i struggle with that yeah and so i personally choose not to believe that God would ever do that because I can't ever imagine the God that I believe in I, with love, but it's up yeah. to him. It's up to God. I mean, I, you know, whatever, I don't, I don't make the rules, but. But you can surely have an opinion. My, though. That's not part of what I, I subscribe to. But you're allowed to have an opinion and I love your opinion on hell. Yes. It's immoral. <laughs> Absolutely. The whole idea, the whole concept is ridiculous. So you don't believe in the hell. What do you think happens to, let's say me, because I, I have totally rejected this. I don't believe in God and I blaspheme his Holy Spirit as often as I possibly can. And I don't love him. So what happens to me? Well, I think that, that, you know, my whole book is based on love, right? Yeah. And, and um, starting in Leviticus, hmm. way back, there's hidden between, you know, two crazy Levitical things is love people, love your neighbor as yourself. Right in the middle there, which I never knew it was in Leviticus, but it, it is in there. Yeah. So yeah. then when, when, and then Jesus said it more than once. And, and it's, it's a theme that's repeated throughout the Bible. So I believe that God is love and that God loves everyone that that God loves everybody. And so regardless of your personal beliefs, God is still God. I don't think that there's like a, a room that you have to go to this room. Mm -hmm. You, you get a timeout from ever, all, all blessings on earth because you don't believe in God. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that that's true. I don't think that there's a, a separation. I mean, I think certainly some people, um, choose to have faith and choose to live differently hopefully because huh. they have faith although you've already mentioned that's not always the case <laughs> but uh but but god never i don't think turns ever his back on anyone so do i go to heaven i hope i see you there 
we can hang out. <laughs> we can play some shuffleboard together. Um, yeah. and then you can go, oh my is God. there a shuffleboard in heaven? I love <laughs> exactly. that question. <laughs> yeah, and then so you can to, go, oh my word. Is heaven, right. is heaven what is described in the Bible? Well, how is heaven described in the Bible? A place with uh, no nighttime. You always got, uh, we're always servants of Yahweh. Uh, we do his bidding throughout the day. Uh, there's a bunch of gates gold everywhere gold streets gold this gold that man i hate gold i think that's disgusting i wouldn't want that at all hopefully maybe he'll give me some glasses or something so i don't see gold everywhere i don't know it, it wouldn't be perfect to me the, the way it's described in the bible is not perfect to me so that's where i'm at with that and 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 you have to spend your eternity with this depending on what you believe of the bible with this documented child killer who kills kids out of jealousy why? Because they, their parents worship a different, a different deity. So that's a lot of the issues I have with this guy. I wouldn't want to spend eternity hanging out with him. He doesn't seem like a real nice guy. You yeah, know? but you also don't believe that the Bible is inspired by God. So therefore, no. there could be stories in there that maybe are misinterpreted, told incorrectly, <sighs> or God gets the credit or the blame where maybe... The credit or the blame shouldn't go that way. Well, I mean, okay, let's go this way. I, there's about 2% of the Bible I agree with. 2%. So everything else is, to me, is just, it's, it's nonsense. It's garbage. It's, it's, it's violent. It's, it's detrimental to women, children, the planet. I see a lot of harm in the Bible. Lots of harm. So in, in order for that to be true, I mean... It's this much, you know, and, and this much, like you said, the love your neighbor stuff that comes from Leviticus. Very good, by the way. That is a very good find. Uh, that me Judaism came up with that in the 1300 BC. And I have a little list here. Hinduism came up with that in 3200 BC. So Hinduism had it first and they had it as one should always treat others as they themselves wish to be treated. So awesome. at that point, I see Judaism borrowing from Hinduism, and then it just goes down the line. You got Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, uh, Confucianism, and then finally, 30 AD, Christianity comes along and says, love your neighbor as yourself. And it's like, well, it's not a new idea, man. That's been around for thousands of years. It's yeah, just you, know, though there's, it, you know, there's some beauty in that. I believe There is love your neighbor. Absolutely. Yeah, well, not only not only that, but that that it was Hindu before it was Christian mm. or, you know, in the Bible or whatever, mm. because uh, there are lots of faiths that there's a lot of things in common and, mm. and can learn from different faiths. Mm. And there's some incredible beauty within the Hindu religion, within Buddhism, within uh, you name it. So and, and there's some incredible, um, wonderful things that anybody can learn. From. Yeah. But there's also a lot of nonsense with, it. there's a lot of make-believe and, and things that humans have fabricated. Um, well, I mean, we can go with Hinduism and all their different gods and then, I've recently discovered Kali Ma, which is one of my favorite Hindu gods. Man, she's so cool. Anyways, <laughs> beside the point, <laughs> we'll get into that later. But man, so, so all these other religions came up with the idea that is in your religion. So it came first from somebody else, just like all these other ideas that I find in the Bible. All of these other ideas can be traced back to other ideas that came before it, other religions that came before it. And most of it is, is, is off of um, the nature, the nature of uh, paganism. There it is, holy cow. Um, the winter solstice, uh, all that stuff. All that is, is very pagan. The, the, the death of Jesus, or sorry, the, the birth of Jesus was written in at that certain time to overshadow the paganism. There's a lot to it. I don't remember most of it, but there's a lot there. Um, and, and, and the history behind the, the, the religion itself, and, and I've been diving into it here and there. It's very interesting. I highly recommend you check it out. The history of the Bible. Um, the, the Bible Unearthed is another great fil uh, film. It's actually a YouTube yeah. video, a book, and an and a audio book, and all that shenanigans. But it's, yeah. it's very interesting to see where these, these people got their ideas from and what other ideas were floating around at that time in that area. Sorry. Total rabbit hole. But back to love, back to love. <laughs> <laughs> but my point there would be, why is that a bad thing? 
Well, no, just, I don't it, think that Christians should Christians uh, should claim that all the wonderful truths that are talked about in the Bible that that they were the first ones to discover that that these truths are the truth. Hmm. You know, Ruth wasn't the only one out there when she wrote the book, right? And so things that were happening, you know, good, wonderful things that were happening were happening everywhere. And so it's, uh, it, I think it's, there's nothing that would shake my faith to know that things were written before the Bible. That, huh. that, so all these ideas that came before the Bible, mm -hmm. that were put into the Bible, that came sure. from other places, doesn't, doesn't shake it at all. It doesn't, it doesn't, because if it's, if it's a, you know, something that should be part of the way we live, then it's something that should be the part of the way we live, no matter what religion came up with it. So do you think that your, your God came up with the Hindu idea of love your neighbor or love yourself as yourself and all that? Yeah. So God gave it to the Hindus first before the Jews. Well, I don't know that he gives it. Well, I mean, given it that's kind of an interesting way to put it i mean i think um i think that there are some things that uh are are natural within us hmm. um like as a mom you know to when you give birth just love that baby and want to protect that baby and take care of that baby and now there are some pretty crappy moms out there um, there are some crappy moms. So I mean, that's not natural. Crappy moms as moms to everybody. Well, well, it's not. Uh, it can be. Um, I think it is human nature, but I think human nature can change if you've been through something bad. Huh. So if you've had a mom that beat you whatever you know let men come over have their way with you whatever it is Jesus. i don't well i don't know <laughs> you know that you took it to the extreme there Holy well, okay, cow. okay. But, if, but if you've had that then uh you're gonna be probably a different mom unless you figure out a way to to overcome that from your past right man well people I, tend to repeat things well bit. that's that's a little harsh but um <laughs> So, so do you think Yahweh can come down and change that person's heart to make them a better I, mom? Do you think he does that? I, I think it's, I think it's up to the mom to become a better mom. Nothing to do with Yahweh. I think that if uh, somebody decides to change their life and, um, and recognizes that there's a God and that God would like them to live a different way, then I think lives change that way for sure. So what, what, what role does God play in that? Well, God is creator and God is, is, uh, uh, I believe in prayer. Uh -huh. So I believe that, that God can, you know, help you out maybe. Or, or even uh, direct you the right way, perhaps. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I don't think he doesn't not help out other people. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't not help out other people. So he, he does help out other people, but we have to ask for it in prayer? Well, I don't think you have to ask for it in prayer. I just think that in, in prayer, uh -huh. that it, it's a different... Um, uh, a different i'm looking for a word you're good i do it all the time author, I'm, I'm looking for a word <laughs> uh i just think that there there's power in prayer power and part of prayer. that power gotcha. right power part of that power is is you part of that power is you you pray for something you pray for a new job or you pray mm -hmm. for you know something to happen in your life mm -hmm. when you pray for it you open yourself up to it more as well and so uh, I don't think somebody doesn't get a new job because they haven't prayed for it. But I do think that if somebody prays for it, that, that God can be in that. What if they're destined for this job and they don't pray for it? Do they not get it? Oh, no. 
They get no. it. So I'm, I'm apparently so if, if, if Yahweh, to, if, well, if Yahweh has that plan, because we Jeremiah, God knows the plans He has for you. Um, so if if you pray for a job and you think it's going to be great, and Yahweh doesn't give you that job, and you end up in poverty, is that is that better for you? I, there's there's so many different things with prayer. All right. Yahweh has a plan for you, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Do we, do we agree Yahweh has a plan for all of us? Well, except what we think that first means and can, can differ. Right. Our plans can differ from Yahweh's plans, right? Right. Right. Our okay. plans can differ. And, and also, I think, you know, Yahweh having the plans, God knowing the plans he has for you um, can mean that he wants you to live in peace and love and joy of course of, of gotcha. course because he's a god of peace and love and joy well but just because those are the plans doesn't mean that's what happens gotcha right because right he's not a right puppet he's not a happen. puppet master which mm -hmm. is a great film um so <laughs> <laughs> we are going to go down this rabbit hole now so jeremiah 29 11 god has plans for you and if i pray things are going to happen prayer plans i've prayed i've asked i've demanded he show himself to me i've asked nicely i've done all the, the, the ranges of different things for him to show up so is his plan for me not to believe because he refuses to show up for me some people he shows up right away um they go in that little meditation state and they, they you know do their thing and, and you're always there for some reason they can feel him they don't really see him or talk to him uh, but they can feel him. I've never experienced anything I can say is Yahweh sending me feelings. So is his goal for me not to believe? Uh, again, he's not a puppet master. He so, wants me to believe in him, right? He wants me to love him, right? Um, sure. I would say right. yes. So what would like, be, a, when, to me, would a, be a, wonderful world. a big yeah. thing would be to show up. That just, I mean, just a, just a little thing. I mean, for an all-powerful God, it's a little thing for him to do. He did it for Saul on the road to Damascus. Why can't he just show up for me so I know he's real? So we can have that relationship that everybody seems to have that I don't. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question. You know, I think, I think there's showing up and I think there's like demanding God to show up. I mean, I don't think we get I can to do all of it. I've done God all of it do since anything. I was yep. a kid. But I don't I don't know that we get to demand God to do anything. He's God. You know, can we I, ask I, him for I, things. I, yeah, of course we can ask and him. And if he if he wants it to happen, he'll do it. Well, not necessarily if he wants it to happen. Or I mean the plan. I, or or just that he'll do it. I I think that that God um I wish God would show up for you. Hmm. Like I would have that same question if I were you. I'd love like, to have that like, conversation why can't with you him. Feel God? Like, Let's right. sit down, God, and have a talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But that would, doesn't that work for me. Good. Does that work for you though? Can you sit down and have a conversation with him and and like invoke him? <laughs> invoke him. I mean, a lot of Christians invoke <laughs> Yahweh's presence and stuff. And light light the candles. And yes. The cards or something or whatever. <laughs> Bible open to certain verse, you know. <laughs> right. 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 Start you know, chanting. it's interesting because I think, you know, there's some people that believe in astrology or believe in um, other things that you can't see, hmm. right? But but believe strongly that it exists hmm. and and just believe in it. Demons. And believe that they're guided by the stars or guided by the whatever. Hmm. And uh, for me, and, and there's lots of other religions and non-religions that meditate Yes. Me, prayer is meditation. Like the words are pretty interchangeable. Hmm. And when you sit down and, and meditate and get Zen and open yourself up, I think that's when you can feel him or feel the answer from him or, you know, sense the way you should go. Gotcha. So when you're in that meditative state, it, this works for you too, right? That's what you're saying. You're in that meditative state. That's when he speaks to you. It will not really speaks to you, but gives you feelings. 
<laughs> well, hopefully I feel him more than just when I meditate, but I believe in him. I think when you don't believe in something, it's, it's going to be awfully hard to feel it. It's hard to you believe know, in things I, I don't see, don't hear, taste, or touch, though. What's, what's that? It's, it's hard to believe in, in people that don't have any physical body. They can't smell them. You can't touch them. You can't have a full-on normal conversation with. It's hard to believe in that kind of thing. It's the Visible people are difficult to believe in. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. But uh, so do you not believe like in a spirit world at all? No. Yeah, no. My kid so, believes in ghosts. I don't. <laughs> you know, that's a funny thing with young kids right yeah young kids that that kids believe all kinds of crazy things yeah yeah but um somehow are are uh more innocent and not so jaded mm. that that yeah. they're not open to things yeah but i mean like reality sets in when you get older and experience and you have still haven't experienced any ghosts or anybody talking to you in your quiet place you <laughs> kind of start to doubt it just happens well, yeah but but that's your reality well, there's true. other realities too. And, and, and I wanted to get into that real quick here, Kim. Um, I've got a list here, six, seven different people who have experienced Kali Ma, the God, the exact same way you've experienced Yahweh. Now, Kali Ma was a God before Yahweh was a God, according to history here. Um, so how do we know that the, when you're in your quiet area, you're not actually receiving a message from Yahweh. You're receiving a message from Kalima. How do you know it's not Kalima? How, how do you know that's not one and the same? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Well, Kalima didn't flood the planet because she was upset people weren't listening to her. So there's a big difference there. Maybe sure. a little more loving. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, certainly there's, there's history, uh, years and years and years of history, right? Yeah, and, before Jesus, uh, before Yahweh, there's years and years and years of history of Kalima. Well, so how do we know Kalima before, isn't the real one? Yeah, well, before Yahweh was was named, I guess, and written about as as Yahweh. Um, he was Elohim. God before existed that. He was a, before then, though. Yeah, he was a Canaanite deity. That's where he came from. And then they just separated him, made it a monotheism, and then Christians came along and made it a tritheism, poly. <laughs> theism and now they worship three gods but, <laughs> but when i see a god that communicates with people that came before your god kali ma is not yahweh they're totally different people totally different gods totally different ideas and concepts so okay well it, but they're totally different man-made ideas and concepts yes yes Nailed but it, it doesn't mean that they're <laughs> not god doesn't mean there is a god just because but it we've got mean there's not a god if people get things uh you, i had an interesting conversation a while ago i used to be right. in the wedding business uh-huh and i had a couple come in and they were muslim and it was it wasn't uh long after 9 11 and i just said you know i know this isn't a muslim thing this is some radical people doing radical things hmm. but in the news they keep saying kill the infidel, kill the infidel. Am I the infidel? I wanted to know, you know, does, does the Quran really say that? Like, am I the infidel? I just asked them because I didn't know enough about the faith. I hadn't yeah. opened it up and, yeah. and I didn't know enough about it. So I just asked them and they, their answer was no. Their answer was that the God of the Jews and the God of the Christians and the God of the Muslims is all one in the same same guy yeah they all spawn off the same religion judaism for sure yeah it's really weird but um we the bible also has kill the infidel several places in it and the infidel is kill anyone who worships anything but yahweh that's in deuteronomy 17 uh kill those who will not seek yahweh that's second chronicles 15 12 kill those who try and get you to worship a different deity that's in deuteronomy 13 kill ball worshipers number 25 numbers 25 sorry uh kill anyone who sacrifices to any other deity that's exodus 22 verse 20 so there's several places in there where the bible itself itself says to kill infidels i'm an right. infidel the according things, to the bible things I'm written by things written by by men and women inspired by their perfect deity so if god if god if 
God has. If, that, if that's the way you want to believe. Does God have a say in what happens here on earth? Does God have a say? Yeah. If he has a plan, is the Bible part of his plan? And what they said about him, is that all part of his plan? Because now we have a book that apparently is misrepresenting God. So what is God going to do about it? Why is he letting these things happen? If he wants to have a relationship ever, with everybody, if he wants to talk to us, interact with us, and be with him, why doesn't he come down and correct it? Why doesn't he say, this version is wrong, this version is wrong, let's try this version, that's the one that is more like me? Why would he let so many bad things about him out? Uh, I think we're kind of left to our own devices. I think that's where the free will comes in, is... You know, certainly there's different translations of the Bible, hmm. just as there's different translations of other things. And if you go back to the original text with a lot of the Bible, when you go back to the original text the, and, and the time period and what was happening at the time and the tradition of the time and all of that together, mm -hmm. the way that it's gotten interpreted isn't necessarily the way that it was first written. But all of this is inside that beautiful book that 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 you enjoy so much. Do you find those <laughs> verses beautiful? Uh, no. There's a I lot in there that are that's beautiful just like all. that, Kim. There's so much in there that's just like that. There's so many but, verses. But there's about also a whole lot about love. Oh, just, and just you know, like this much like, like, like if you much. just if you just if all you took from the Bible were the words of Jesus, and that's all you took. Mm. You you can live a pretty good life just living the way Jesus would like you to live. Have you read all the words of Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's stuff in there. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to Matthew 13, 41, where Jesus says the son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all of those who do evil i'm sinful and evil according to the book they will throw they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth hell we, we establish you don't believe in but that sounds like hell to me and that sounds like jesus saying something pretty nasty about people that don't believe he's also got some pretty interesting things to say about his own mother too um let's see how long will... <laughs> sorry this is a this is an unfinished note clearly this is a very long one bear with me jesus was disrespectful to his mother here we go uh john 2 3 through 5 when the wine well the wine ran out the mother of jesus said to him they have no wine and jesus said to her woman what does this have to do with me my hour has not yet come he does not treat his mother with respect there's a couple other places where he, he they're outside the house and says, I don't know those people. It's not my, his mom and his brother, I guess, were outside. I don't know those people. They're not my family. You're my family. You believe in me and love me and blah, 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 blah. So not everything he says is awesome. Not everything he does is awesome. There's a story in here where he gets hangry. He gets hangry, Jesus. And he curses a tree because it didn't have fruit that, and it wasn't even in season. Jesus, the all-knowing guy, cursed a tree and killed it. I think. If we're going to tell a story about this loving, awesome guru, maybe he should make the tree grow fruitful and feed the whole village. What sounds better, cursing a tree to kill it or causing the fruit to grow and everybody is fed? You know, uh, there, there are things that, uh, that I don't know. Like yeah. I, I would, you know, I'd like to take those verses and go back. the The whole mother, what does this have to do with me? I yeah. mean, you know, the but but the the way you say it, it sounds terrible. It, but well, he could have just mean... said, "So, mom, what's this got to do with me?" I mean, you you know what I'm saying? Like, you can make the you can make anything you want sound bad, you know, well, to prove your point. You you can. Take, I'm just reading the verse. Take stuff out. Well, sure, but you're not reading before, you're not reading after, you're reading it with your own inflection, so you're reading it the way you read it, somebody else would read it entirely differently, but so it's all my interpretations, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would you interpret um, Matthew 3.31 when, when he says your mother, oh, there it is, yeah, Matthew 3.31, and his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they sent him and uh, sent him and called him. 
and a crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and brother are, are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and brothers? And looking, excuse me, and looking about at those who were standing around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. For whoever, whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Completely ignoring his, his family that's outside, he's got his new adopted family. They love him, so now they're his mother, brothers, and whatnot. But how do you <laughs> take that? You're making the assumption. Well, I think you're making the assumption that he ignored his mother and brothers. When did he you know, acknowledge that, them that in that it verse? Does, it doesn't say that they didn't let him in he or didn't. that, you know, whatever. He's he's making the point that that it's the family of God is, right. you know, the, the point that he's making. I understand the point he's making, but he's right. also so pushing not aside his own mother just and brother. dissing his mom and brothers. You don't think that's dissing his mom and brother? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. They're outside I mean, seeking he, you. He Your just, mom it was an opportunity to make the point that that we're all family. It, well, I mean, <laughs> uh, we're all humans. We're all related that way, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Not so much this this part um but so your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you and he answers them who are my mother and brothers in other words not them the people in here how well, else do you take that or in other words i have a question for you who who are my mother and brothers why didn't he say that? we're all mothers you're all brothers in the lord why didn't he say that uh, he did didn't he no he says well, here yeah. are my mother and brothers not there here so he's dissing them and in that instance is where i'm yeah going. well i don't take it as that that he's saying they aren't he's just saying you guys are you guys are as well i, I mean he he <laughs> he he had a relationship with his mom i mean she was Did he, though? at the cross for goodness sake i mean there he didn't leave his mom high and dry and just she was just written out of the story she she's part of the story throughout his life can you name any good interactions that they had with each other um well he turned the water into wine well, that's a great interaction but i don't think that was between him and his mom so it, it, between him and his mom well, is there I a good, is there a good jesus, mom asked him to is there a G, good jesus mom story we're like, oh man, that's how we should treat our mothers. Look at Jesus. Look at him go. Or do we have verses like, woman, why are you asking me this? <laughs> or mom, why are you asking me this? You know, my time. No, he says woman, out. not just and, mom. It says okay, woman. woman. Would you go to your mom and go, woman, why are you asking me this? Or <laughs> let me just, let me. Of course, try translated a different tone. as woman, oh, written originally, woman. Greek or Hebrew, you know, whatever, like, and then translated as woman. And then you can say woman, or you can uh, say no. woman, you know, whatever. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, we can I think agree you can to disagree on that one. I think we, we can, we can agree to disagree, but yeah. I really want to hear a good story between Jesus and his mom. Do you know one? <laughs> um, yeah. When, when um, Jesus asked for his mom to be looked after and taken care of after he what verse is that uh i don't know the I don't number, recall that one but yeah when uh i'll have to look into that yeah Jesus. on the right Once more. i'll send it to you yeah yeah yeah. please do i'll, I'll be happy uh, to i'll put it in the the intro we'll do a whole thing about it she just wants yeah. mom to be looked after good um cool thank you all right so now that we've got the mom stuff out of the way <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just kind of wanted to end it here on one last thing. Um, you did say that the, the Bible was written by humans. Um, so any of the laws in the Old Testament, do you think those were, because Yahweh, well, people, I guess, say in the Bible several points that these laws are God's laws and they're perfect, holy, righteous, and good. So you're talking about like the Levitical laws. Yeah, like all six are in 13, whatever. Any of right, those. Right, right. Are any right. of those God-inspired? Uh, well, I think that some of them were. How can you tell? Because of the times. I mean, I think that there's, there were laws that were written at the time that were important for people's health. Um, <laughs> and and so, so some of them are that. Mm. Um, some of them are, you know, 
customary. Some of them are wh whatever they happen to be. But if you're a Christian, you believe that Jesus fulfilled the law and right, yeah. you no longer have to. And, 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 and yeah, too, yeah. you know, it, it's when, when they ask Jesus, you know, what, what do we, how do we know we're sinning? There's 631 laws in the Old Testament. How do we know that we're not breaking one of them? You know, because Jewish people were trying to live by those laws, right? At the time. And he said, and go he by said, that Hindu law that says, love your neighbor. Exactly. Trust he the said, Hindus. Don't worry about that. He said, <laughs> because it's, because it came from God. It, Whether it, well, it was written by the Hindus or yeah, not. It definitely that, came from the Hindus first. And, and do you yeah. think God was talking to the Hindus about the one true God? Like he's the one true God? Was he telling them? Well, I think God existed because God is eternal. And why so didn't he I stop the Hindus? God existed. Why didn't he teach them the right way? It's the first religion. Why didn't he teach the first religion the right way? Well, then um, why, why did the Baptists believe one thing and the Lutherans another? And, well, and I have an answer for that. You're not going like to um, Something else, <laughs> right? And, you know, and why does God not come down and, and set the record straight? Yeah. I, I think it's the same thing. I think that we are allowed to be who we are. Like we, we have free will. I mean, it's God isn't directing our every step. Hmm. But he does direct our afterlife, right? No. Oh, gosh. He doesn't I don't believe the that heaven is what, what you described it to be earlier. Well, it's biblically accurate. I mean, well, what, what I don't is, know. What is I mean, there's you? a great book out there called Heaven, written by Randy Alcorn. And uh, he did so much research on it that it'd be an interesting book, maybe, for you to read. Uh, 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 Randy, who? Randy Alcorn. Alcorn. Oh, that's an easy one to remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah um it's called heaven interesting so what is heaven to you is it is it what is described in the bible or is it something different why well, I, I think heaven is a lot like this except without the crap but I, I think we'll have jobs <laughs> i'd love not to have to crap thank you i know I, <laughs> it would save a lot of time wouldn't it <laughs> at yeah. least 30 minutes a day oh man so there's no crapping in heaven I love this, Evan. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yeah. Can you quote me on that, please? <laughs> but I think Kim we'll have jobs oh, and man. there will be, you know, whatever. Oh, guys, like, I don't want to have to work in heaven. That's not uh, heaven. Really? Do you have a job that you don't like? No, I love my job. It's rewarding. Well, but in heaven, then, I won't have to do my it? job because animals won't need saving in heaven. I work in animals an animal hospital. Won't need so saving. They, they won't need any of that. So I won't have that job. And I love this job. It's a very tough job, but it's rewarding. I wouldn't have this job in heaven because everything's perfect. There's no pain, no suffering, no nothing. So what would I do? Telemarketing? I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Shuffleboard telemarketing. Is your shuffleboard <laughs> down? Try reset. I don't know, but I'm thinking maybe, Michael, <laughs> as wise and as schooled as you are, oh. there's probably something else that you'd find enjoyable. Uh, for eternity. I don't know. That seems like a long time. <laughs> I'd get bored of that job. I don't well, know. Then maybe That's an interesting concept one. though. So in, yeah. in heaven, we have jobs. Is that in the Bible? Um, well, read, read Randy Alcorn's book. Randy and find Alcorn. out where his this... research came from. And, and it's, it's very interesting. It's very good. It's very in-depth study of heaven. Interesting. In-depth. Yeah. Does he use the Bible as his, as his source or does he go to outside sources? Uh, I, I, he does both. How do you have outside sources on heaven? Um, I think, you know, I, I don't, I, I would have to reread the book. Yeah, to be I'm, honest I'm with totally you. curious now. But um, yeah, I mean, read the book. Interesting. Read the book. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's it. that outside source, that one kid that went to heaven, but it turned out he was just lying. There's that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there have been lots of people who have had um, after after, after like, experiences yeah and how do you yeah. know which one's true who's lying who's full of it i mean how do you even know like the bible itself tells us there's certain things in heaven how do we know if that's true like how do you decipher the true things about your religion versus the man-made stuff i think that that it's kind of up to you you know i think that so huh. that um yeah i mean i think that uh i believe differently than the person next door well, and yeah, they every, believe differently yeah. than the person next door to them no true right? christian right well I, I mean it's there's there's no perfect anything 
Mm. Right? No perfect religion. Mm. And so um, I think it's, and I think it's okay. I think it's okay to, to allow people to believe the way they believe mm. and, uh, and have an opinion. I mean, we're, we're living in this world that's so divisive in so many ways. And our, our country can be so divisive depending on what side of the political aisle you're sitting on. Politics, mm -hmm. for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. We let ruin relationships. Mm -hmm. Why do we let them ruin relationships? If somebody believes that that's the way our country should go or, you know, or that the president's great or the president's not or whatever opinion somebody has, they're allowed to have that opinion. Right. You know, it's, it's not up to, to me to change somebody's opinion. They're allowed to have their opinion. But when their opinion is detrimental to society or detrimental to them as a whole, then I have an issue. We can go to, you, you said, let people believe what they want to believe. I'm not going to let the Nazi go over there and believe what they want to believe. I'm going to challenge the Nazi. Right. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm also going to challenge Democrats and Republicans. So you're taking a little far there, Michael. I'm also going to challenge Republicans on the nonsense of Donald Trump. 100%. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and challenge somebody for believing something that's rather ridiculous and harmful to humanity. That's where I'm going with religion. You know religion what's is harmful to humanity. Oh, and gosh. That is why I feel we need to challenge it. You know, I, I agree. Religion is harmful. Belief in Jesus, belief in God is not religion. It's faith. Yeah, well, okay. Well, and, that's, and that's... so, but, but I, <laughs> I agree with you. There's, there's a lot of religion that is very harmful. I, so I agree. Do you think we should believe more true things or more make-believe things? <laughs> what is better for society? Believing in true things or believing in make-believe? What is better? Well, well, truth. Right. Truth. And that's where I'm at. Truth is good. The belief in invisible people, I feel, is harmful. It's not the truth. It's fantasy. It's make-believe. It's all of those things to me. I haven't been convinced. I haven't seen any evidence. Um, there's so many things that, that I have a problem with. Uh, the Bible, in an instance, uh, people love quoting the Bible and all the verses and whatnot. But they, they again, they use that 2%. But the you rest know, of it is just, well, I don't know. Right. You know? But you know, what's interesting is um, there are people in your same boat. You know, mm -hmm. you're not alone in this, of course. And there are people that um, were radically in your same boat, like, mm -hmm. like you are, who then came to believe in God, like C.S. Lewis, for instance. I mean, they're not for any good reason, though. Well, well, no. I mean, read his history. Yeah, read, read his history, read his books. It all I boils mean, it, down to a feeling. Okay. And, and that's, so, and I can't so, get past. That. So do you have a feeling? Okay. So do you have a feeling with your kids? Like, do you feel my kids are here? I can, I can physically interact with my children. That's different okay. than an invisible man. Okay. But right now they're in another room. You right. don't, I can hear them. them. I can hear them. Okay. But I can also have cameras that I can just turn on they, and watch them. When, when your kids go away to college, I can still call are them. Are you still going to have feelings about them? I can still call them. Kids. Even when you're not FaceTime. seeing them? <laughs> I've never that, seen that, any yeah, God, that though. Matter. That's 100% different. These kids, I've raised them. I watched them birth. That's okay. different than a I, God. I never I watched God get birthed. My <laughs> point my point is, it goes back to the word feeling. Yeah, but there's yeah. physical evidence behind so you, that feeling. You believe him. in feelings. I believe, believe in physical believe evidence in that right. comes with the feelings. <laughs> okay, so if you... I don't know, felt something about something that you don't have physical evidence about, you know, gravity, you There's can't physical see Physical evidence of gravity. There's physical evidence of gravity. Okay. Ready? Well, there it is. Right. There it is. <laughs> gravity is real. My pen fell to the ground. Sure. Now, Yahweh can fix the gravity and make it go float in the air. You ready? Can we ask Yahweh? Why, Yahweh, why would no I, I don't think that's why the way wouldn't it works. he oh man this is going to show himself to so many of my listeners my listeners I don't will think see that's this the way god, god works i don't think he has to it, show himself to all your listeners by defying gravity I what's just the fleece guy who's the true. fleece guy what's that guy with the fleece oh, i can't remember his name josh oh my goodness oh i know why is that about. yeah okay. i don't know why it's escaping my name but the name is escaping right. but he asked john if I'm going to win this battle, make the fleece wet and the grass dry or the grass dry and the fleece wet. He did it like two or three times and he mm. already knew the outcome. 
because he was already told, but he's still testing God and God still came through and showed him what he wanted by physically altering the world. Okay. Now, why can't God physically alter the world for me? Am I not important enough? <laughs> Does he not love me enough? You ready? Here it goes. God's going to let this pan. No, gravity. Gravity still works. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. And that's why I'm there. Well, you know. What was that guy's name that's going to bug me? The fleece? <clears throat> Anyways, we'll do that later. Um, but so, so I hear you. But, but, but so it works for I, some and not for everybody, you know? And, and why am I not as important? I, I don't think it has anything to do with that you're not as important or you're hmm. not not as loved or you're not as anything else so why does he you are me? as important well maybe maybe showing what well, winning battle is different than i don't know i uh, mean that's another part of of god being god is that i don't control him uh, I, you don't control him we don't control god well we, i don't think we can make demands and then god's gonna go oh, okay Kim well, said, so therefore I'm gonna. But there's places in the Bible where that happens, the though. Works. But there's you places know, think, in the Bible where that happens. God shows up well, for sure. people when he asks there, them to. There's 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 times today, there's times in these days where where people see God show up. So he just doesn't care enough about me. No, no, it doesn't have anything to do with that. That's so weird. I I just don't think it has anything to do with that, Michael. It's uh you know, God gets to be God. Hmm. And, so, and if he wants to be invisible and mute, damn it, he'll be invisible and mute. <laughs> well, you know how you can tune your kids out? You can oh, tune God I out wish. as well. I don't have that ability, man. <laughs> I just can't. I've tried. Oh my God. When they're sitting over there just making pterodactyl noises for no reason, spinning around in circles, jumping off couches. I've tried. I've tried. It's, it's hard. <laughs> Uh, all right kid well this has been fun thank you so much for your time and patience today why don't you tell the folks at home where we can find your stuff yes yeah so i'm literally the only kim sorrell spelled my way in the entire world because wow. there are way too many letters yeah i know <laughs> there's probably other michael wiseman's in fact there I, are yes there i are. know <laughs> yes but so uh, s-o-r-r-e-l-l-e -L -L -E. lots of e's lots of r's lots of l's so kim .com is my website um, my latest book, Love Is, is available everywhere. There's a, it has a dark blue background. And I really don't think that it matters if you're a Christian or not. I think love is universal hmm. for everybody. And I think the truths that I figured out, the things that I found out about love, I think are helpful to anybody, no matter what your belief system is. Hmm. And uh, so Love Is um, is the name of the book. It's available at Barnes and Noble and other brick and mortar stores, and it's available online everywhere. Awesome. And, yeah. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for showing your book and, and, and your feelings and your, your, your beliefs with me. I love it. Appreciate it. We'll keep in contact. We'll talk later. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> That was awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm definitely gonna check out your book. I like that. Um, love is. And then that that heaven guy. That sounds really intriguing, actually. And then mm -hmm. I broke my pen. Yes, it's yeah. It's a it's a bit of a dry read, I'll be honest. The oh, no. heaven book, but it's it's good. Like good. there's yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll pick it apart and find out where he gets his information from and whatnot. And then maybe, maybe we can both do it. That would be fun, kind of like a book club. I like this fun. idea. Okay, Heaven Book Club. I'm doing this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact you. You ready? All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, Kim. Talk to you later. Okay. You know Take care, out. Michael. All right. Thank you. And that's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you access to the patron feed, unaired conversations, early access to each episode, and much more. For the latest events, BSW swag, and a peek behind the scenes, head on over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. The Bible Says What the book is out. Head on over to thebiblesayswhat.com and get yourself and your grandma a signed copy. 
Thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet, it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BSW the podcast and click the appropriate buttons. If you can't support the show monetarily, please like, share, and or leave a review. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram pages. You can also reach me at bswthepodcast at gmail.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? what but i can tell it is positive in a way and she is helping me kalaka kalika states i have found i found my uh, no no kalika we'll go with kalika i had it From in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is the Bible says what? (laughs) Uh, mm. (sighs) (laughs) What the fuck? Oh, it's Kali Ma. It's Kali Ma. Kali Ma. It's making me laugh. It's the power of Kali Ma. She's sending me laughter. (sighs) You know, like the Holy Spirit sends Christians laughter. From in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman.